I've I'm known not to be a huge fan of the Aggie tears. <laughs> and you know, one of the things and I, this is probably going to get me in trouble, but it's fine. One of the things that annoys me about fandom is when you have a thimble-sized football stadium and you talk about how you're the loudest stadium or we're we're raucous, but well, we only have 25,000 fans at Maverick Stadium here in <laughs> good old Logan. But Come we're on. really we're really loud. It's like, bro, no, actually yeah, I mean, anyway, is Maverick a home field advantage? Yes it is. Yes it is. Um Maverick Stadium, Merlin Olsen Field, it's a home field advantage. So there's no question about that. It's Friday night, and I think we all know major football, major college football dreams go to die Friday night football, right? BYU's a massive nine-point favorite in this game. And depending on where you're getting your money from, BYU's as much as a a ten-and-a-half point favorite in this game. Home field advantage will not determine the outcome of this game. Yeah. And I guess, Jake, my biggest question is, can Utah State – and BYU's dream season. No, I, I think that I think that you know this this conversation happens every year. Oh man, BYU has won a couple of games, and Utah State's on the schedule. Utah State's hungry. They're three and one. They've had a couple of nice wins. Man, they could really beat BYU. Yeah, my ass. They're not beating BYU. <laughs> they're they're. It's not happening. And and I think the bigger question really is, and this is why I think you have the Taysom situation all those years ago. You know, Utah State knows they're outclassed by BYU. Yet, you know, what happens is, is you get to the third quarter, the game's not in question. And now what's going to happen? Now you're going to start taking shots at the quarterback. Now you're going to start playing a little dirtier, you know? And so I think that that type of narrative tends to happen. And I understand it. If you're Utah State, you're, you're the little guy in the state. There's no doubt about it. But you want to fight to be relevant. So my biggest thing in this game is, no, Utah State is not going to end BYU's run. However, I think they can uh, contribute to you, uh, to BYU losing the following week because of injury. I think I think BYU's main focus needs to play a healthy game of football here. They, they need to leave this, leave this game as healthy as possible because I'm telling you, you can't sustain unlimited injuries on this team. You know, we've talked all about the losses at the linebacker position. You know, you've got this the the Jaron Hall situation where he's been dealing with it a little bit. Not that he's out or anything, but he's just been dealing with some things. So I just think the main mission here needs to be to leave this game healthy because I don't think there's going to be uh, much of a doubt that you're winning the actual game. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that I think the thing with Utah State is. There's no doubt this is a rivalry. And underselling the rivalry, this is – is it Arizona State, Arizona? Is it USC, UCLA? Is it BYU, Utah? It's not. But right now, Utah State happens to be BYU's best rival because that's who's on the schedule in front of them. And when you look at the last time these two teams played in, what, 2019, BYU had their way. And I think Utah State is asking itself what kind of football team it is. Because I, I don't honestly, I don't know if we even know how good Utah State is. I think the biggest questions for me um, very clearly is Nisa Mahe, I think, has to play and he has to play well. Uh, I think Tyler Batty has to play and he has to play well. Because I think we all know that BYU has struggled to stop the run a bit here. Mm -hmm. But what do we also know? That last week against Boise State... It ain't like Utah State did a real good job protecting the quarterback. So the question is, who's going to do a better job in the trenches? I absolutely believe far more in BYU's talent up front on both sides of the football than I do in Utah State. And again, you can play this game in Logan or Provo or Timbuktu. It doesn't matter. Talent, I think, usually will win football games. The most well-coached talent will usually come out on top. And there's no team in this country right now that's more well-coached and playing to their top than BYU. And I think, Jake, that's ultimately why – and I haven't come up on a score. We'll do that tomorrow on the show. But yeah. 
I, I feel really good that BYU is going to go up there and ultimately win the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like I said, I don't have any doubt that BYU is going to go in and they're going to control the game. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them just start this game out uh, by using Algier and, and, and just battering this this Utah State, you know, defensive line. I, I wouldn't be surprised by that, you know. Um, make a statement, you know. Come out and control the game and control the clock. And I think – that's the biggest thing. That's how you that's how you take control of games. You hand the football off, you get it done on the offensive line, and you start running for five and six yards of carry. And that way you don't even need the big play. You're just gonna slowly and methodically run the ball down the field and road grade them. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that early in this game. BYU has a, a, a tendency to start games out a little slower, start games out a little more conservatively. Right. And I actually like that this week. I, I if I'm BYU I'm going. I'm going up there, and I'm saying, okay, we're going to turn around and hand the football off. We're going to protect Jaron, and and we're going to uh, establish ourselves. And yeah, will will Jaron make a play here or there? Sure, I'm sure he will. But I, my the last thing that you need is Jaron Hall out there running and taking a big hit because you know that Utah State's going to be looking for that opportunity. Oh, there's there's no question about that. And I think one of the things you have to do here is you have to establish the run game simply to control the clock because there's no doubt at least in in the film that I've seen Utah State is explosive and and watching their game against Blasis State last week that's just the way I'm going to say it mm -hmm. every single time um they have some explosive offense and it really is a matter of them getting better line play and I I I think that's the the biggest question I and again I, I, I say tongue-in-cheek. I joke with Utah State fans. I have no issue with Utah State. I just think when you're talking, to, you're trying to compare yourself to BYU, and it's cool that you've stolen some recruits, and you Lavelle Edwards Stadium is 60,000 strong. Yeah, dude. There's more, there's more bodies in the rock than there is in all of Maverick Stadium. Who are we kidding? The, the student section at BYU has won them two games, in my opinion. Kyle Whittingham openly talked about how he has never heard Lavelle Edwards Stadium louder than he did it at the, the game a couple of weeks ago. You see that Arizona State just simply couldn't snap the football correctly because the fans were so loud. 25,100 fans at a sold-out Maverick Stadium is neat. Congratulations. <laughs> but how many of those are going to be BYU fans and even if you do have a full stadium that only has Utah State students lobbing Mormon suck, where is your magic underpants jokes at the BYU sideline, it ain't going to matter because 25,000 of the loudest Utah State fans ain't that loud. Not when you've been playing in front of 60,000 at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Yeah. Not when you played at a jam-packed Allegiant Stadium. Like, we're making way too much of and this. And that place and, is bigger than Lavelle is. Yeah, and, and listen, I understand that, you know, we, we – how do I say this nicely? I understand that Utah State, for some time, and probably the rest of their existence, will always be, you know, the, the little brother that was probably adopted and nobody really cares if he eats or not. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> – Utah State's always going to be uh, fourth, third, fourth, fifth. Like, yeah. I mean, your basketball coach is now at the U. Like, are you, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, nice I, little program there. I mean, that it. <laughs> way to go, <laughs> Aggie tears. Right? Uh, like, I just, I know you're the little engine that could. We get it. You gave up 45 points to Air Force. Okay, <laughs> you you. <laughs> Uh, Air anyway. Force. Oh, but we look. Hey, man, we went on the road and and we beat Washington State in Pullman. Good, good, good. Nick the Dick Rolovich shouldn't even be the coach there anymore. You really want to put a feather in your cap? Utah beat Washington State, and after all, all the Utah State fans are like, "Well, Utah sucks this year. We're better." No, you're not. Yeah, actually, you're not better. You're not. You're not, dude. You're, you're not. Stop. So my point is. When when you look at the Boise State loss, did you got trucked by Boise State? Yeah. Like you got trucked, Utah State, twenty-seven to three. 
Okay, I feel you better. You didn't now. get into the end zone in that game, bro. I feel better now. Do you? Uh, the last six games have been split between Utah State and BYU 3-3, Greg Hawkins says. BYU looks much better this year, but I expect to see Utah State come out guns blazing. They always seem to get up for this game. They do. Well, it's the they biggest will come, game on their schedule. They will come out fully aroused. Trust me. Yeah. Spencer Borgen says BYU can't get in a shootout with Utah State. No, they should not. But again, I think that's why having Nice Amahe back in, in Tyler Batty is so important. Yeah. Having that defensive line intact, that, that like, and this is what we talked about on Monday, 61 notifications on Sunday morning about how bad the BYU defense is without your two best defensive linemen. You know, like, and your best linebacker, but who's counting? South Florida. Relax. R- Romney on Romney crime. Relax. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Uh, BYU. Just take a nice and easy. Yeah. Okay, just relax. Please. Settle down. Please. BYU fan CJ says, with our D-line mostly back, I don't see how we lose, honestly. This isn't the mentally weak BYU teams of a few years ago. I agree. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The, the expectation is not that this is going to be a close game. The, the expectation is BYU is going to handle this team. That, that BYU is going to be up double digits at half. Triple digits. Triple digits. BYU is going to be up quadruple digits. It's 150 to 3 at halftime. Ocho, siete, cinco, seis. Anyway. Wow. The, I don't know. Wow. Are people myrant? Yes. Yes. So I was talking to a, a, a Latin business owner the other day at, at the Yelpatory. Right. And my wife, um, who works for a huge tech company, whose former CEO went to space, um, was sitting there with me. And I, I we sit next to each other all day. She farts into her fan. It's amazing. <laughs> anyway, the point is. Oh, um, what a loser. You know, um, we were sitting there and I said, hey, man. Um, oh, like, how do you spell sace? <laughs> I don't know either. That's not what we're about. I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. So we were trying to figure wow. that out. We're not the smartest people around. How do you spell sace? S-E-X. Um, you know, I think yeah. it's S E I. I don't remember what we came up with, but my wife was like, "It's S E I S." Oh, is it? I'm really? pretty sure. Okay, I can't spell my own name on most days. Pretty sure my wife laughed at me because yeah, I don't know why I was trying to spell it when I was talking on the phone, but it's fine. Anyway, the point is, the point is, I don't know what we were talking about, but good talk. But good talk. I yeah. think BYU uh-huh. is going to win. Um, I also think that we have a game tonight, and then. A huge NFL weekend yeah. to get to. Mm-hmm. 